Hi guys, my name is Joe and welcome to Fighting Words, the martial arts library. Fighting Words. So on this channel I tend to do book reviews of martial arts books and also talk about other martial arts related subjects. This is a segment I call Media Fight Monday. So on the first and third Mondays of every month I take a fight scene from TVs, movies, uh, animation, etc. and I break down the action and give it a grade based on the realism of the action as well as the storytelling value. This week I'm going to be taking a look at The One with Jet Li. And this is going to be sort of easy because when I give a background on the fighters, Jet Li is the only one I know for sure. Now to make this scene where Jet Li fights Jet Li, uh, they they basically had a mask, a green mask over the face of stunt double so they could digitally insert Jet Li's face. I tried to find out who was in this fight scene with Jet Li. When I looked at the featurettes, they just kept saying stunt double, stunt double, stunt double. There are three credited and one uncredited individuals as far as Jet Li stunt doubles. So I'm going to go ahead and put their names up. I don't know if one of them was in this fight or all of them was in this fight. All of them were in this fight. This is a really cool fight scene. Jet Li and Chuck Norris happen to be in some of my favorite fight scenes of all time. Uh, the, the plot of The One, it's, it's got sort of a science fiction theme. There's this idea that a multiverse exists, and when you kill your double in the multiverse, his energy is distributed throughout the remaining use. <laughs> your remaining duplicates, including yourself. So, this one version of Jet Li is trying to kill all the other versions so he can be the one. Insert title here. So, this is the last fight between the remaining two versions of Jet Li. We got the bad guy, who, again, has been traveling through the multiverse, and we got the good guy, who thought he was going crazy and uh, bad guy killed his wife and now this is their final showdown. So one thing that we get to notice already is that bad guy is taking his coveralls and stripping them down. Storytelling wise this allows us to tell who's the bad guy and who's the good guy. Bad guy has a gray top and the good guy is all in black. So this is going to be at half speed. So good guy. Throws two kicks that miss. Throws some punches that are being defended against. He's doing cross step, throwing some back fists. Side kick is blocked. Bad guy. Whew. Bad guy uses his own leg to plant good guy's kick on the ground. And then we get this punch exchange. Some more lower leg kicks that are being deflected or avoided. And they still have that connection up top. <laughs> he defends the kick by jumping up and doing a split on the railing. And then catching a punch as it's going in. That would be a crap way to actually... <laughs> Considering how compromised your balance is, because you're spread out this way, if you receive force coming toward you and you don't have any sort of brace in the back, you're going to fall over. Deflects, goes for a punch, and dude flips out of it to avoid. Some more kicks that are avoided. More blocks. Swing and a miss. Another block. Kick is blocked. Spinning back fist. One thing I'm noticing from Good Guy, he likes to do that cross step with a bunch of spinning back fists. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned yet that's going to come up, it came up throughout the story. And it's one of the reasons that I love this fight so much. So, Good Guy, Gabe. Gabe is his name. I think the bad guy is Yu Law. Bad Guy practices a style called Singy Chuan. And that is a very linear style, using a lot of stepping and dropping power and forward motion. Good Guy practices a style called Pakwa or Bagua, 
and that involves a lot of circling around and a lot of open hand techniques, which we're not seeing a whole lot of, but his cross set position I think is playing into some of that. This even comes out in the personalities of the different fighters involved, where bad guy says, at least once, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And that sort of describes his personality. I'm very direct. I'm going to go get that thing. Good guy had this moment where he was shown practicing Pakwa. And there's sort of this voiceover talking about, you know, he needs to find his center. Everything revolves around the center. And his wife was his center. And now she did. And it's this guy's fault. So he's a little angry. And he doesn't have a center. Drama. Ooh, nice kicking sequence. But so far, bad guy has remained largely untouched. The one clear strike he lands, he pretty much ignores. And again, good guy is throwing down, but largely missing, being blocked. And again, just missing as the bad guy circles around, doing some cool wire work. Tries a headbutt, I like that. <laughs> he gets a punch and knocks him back. The other guy gets a double fist punch and knocks him back. That has more of a visually damaging effect. Now what's interesting, the fist form that I saw there looked like what's called a phoenix eye fist, with the extended knuckles. So good guy gets knocked down onto the second platform. Bad guy's coming at you. Good guy jumps up and gets knocked down. Now, the purpose for some of this speed differential in the choreography is these guys are supposed to be not just stronger than the average human, but faster than the average human. How much stronger? Well, we saw earlier in the film, uh, bad guy is like holding two police motorbikes, one in each hand. So we're in the realm of being superhuman at this point. Bad guy picks up good guy, gives him a nice sidekick. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, hooks his foot behind him and starts thrust kicking his chest. Uh, falls over, crashes to the ground. Goes for a stomp, gets kicked in the face. Again, he's deflecting or evading most of the shots. Your guy connects to him, but gets kicked in the face. That's a weird kick. And we're getting some of that singy footwork from U-Law, the bad guy. That dropping wave form. He's coming directly at him. He evades the sweep. Did he evade it? I guess. Smashes him with that double fist punch. I don't know if that's part of singy. It's a very singy motion, but I'm not sure if it's part of it. Anyway, bad guy thinks he's won. And he's about to feel the force of the dead good guy. But... Gabe isn't done yet. 
And I do like the cinematography here. He had to take off his wedding ring for an MRI. But he's looking at where the band used to be. He remembers his wife. And now we see a change in him. He remembers his center. Bad guy is confused. So we see Gabe with the fists. So you law steps into his stance, ready to thrust forward. And our good guy, Gabe, just relaxes. Now this is the Pacwa coming out. All that circular movement. You can see in his face he's at peace now. There's a bunch of unnecessary movement, but okay. So... Yulaw keeps thrusting to the center, and Gabe keeps evading him. Now it's his turn. He's back in his element now. He's using circular deflections. He's evading. He's spiraling. <laughs> Alright, that's a cool sequence. And again, more evading, more circular footwork. While one tries to step in at angles, thrust straight ahead. He's moving out of the way and then striking from an angle as the opportunity presents itself. So he's moving around his opponent. You see Gabe controlling Yulaw's limbs. He's definitely getting style points for this. And again, not meeting force with force. Capturing the limb and using circular motions to take it off center. Moving himself around the bad guy. That's yeah, a mighty, mighty palm strike. And again, another example of taking his opponent's force and using it against him with that throw. Boom.
I'm going to get a weapon. Now this whole time the warehouse is sort of exploding around them. Bad guy's gonna kill him with an axe. Except no. And that's the fight. So, let's start with Howard rating. Realism. <laughs> Not very high. It was very stylized. I like that. Uh, this action scene is sort of what began my my brief fasc fascination with Pakwa Chang. But as far as like realism goes, I mean, even taking into account superpowers are at play. There's a lot of physics that's just not working right there. Um, there are a lot of questionable tactical decisions. I mean, it, it's more fanciful than anything else. I hate to do this because I love the fight scene, but for realism, it's got to be a D minus. Like I'm thinking about an F, but I, I can't do it. I'm too biased in favor of it. But as far as storytelling goes, this is really good. We see from even a meta level, like how are we going to tell these guys apart? At the beginning of the fight, bad guy, Yulaw, strips the, the top of his coveralls down so we can tell who's who. And we have good guy Gabe going in with anger and just losing that part of the fight. You know, the first half, he's just thrown as hard as he can and... You know, bad guy is just better at violence. And he's schooling him. It's like, if we're playing this game, you're playing my game, I'm better at it. And he's just, you know, beating the crap out of him and hardly taking any damage himself. However, then we get into the second half of the fight. When Gabe finds his center, he remembers his wife. That turns the fight around 180 degrees. Because... Bad guy is now angry, like, I thought I beat this dude. I thought the fight was over. I, th I thought I had the prize. They don't call it that. But, again, this is... We're using Highlander terminology for a Highlander storyline. Good guy Gabe is now very much at peace. So, he's over here deflecting the incoming shots. I'm not going to fight you head on. I'm going to avoid you. And we see that... Pakwa style really come out here. And it's good. And he's just wrecking him and hardly taking any damage himself because he's no longer fighting, you know, head on, face to face. It's not just symbolic of his fighting style, it's symbolic of his attitude, his his personality. It, it's a change that is beyond the physical. And I like the fact that, storytelling-wise, once he centers himself, once he remembers who he is, remembers his purpose and his drive, then he doesn't have any problem defeating the bad guy. So, storytelling-wise, I don't know. I get caught up in it. I'm going to give that an A+. So, I don't average the grades, <laughs> but I would think that that would make up a lot for an E-. minus. Um, but yeah, that, that is that fight. Uh, I really enjoy it. Oh, I forgot fight choreographer. I always name the fight choreographer. So I'm going to put a little bit here about that. But yeah, that, that is one of my favorite fights to watch of all time. Even though I gave it a D minus for realism, because it's not realistic. But it is fun. And it does tell a good story. Anyway, that's all I have for this week. And hope you guys will tune in for my next Media Fight Monday in two weeks. And if you'd like to support the channel, please consider donating to my coffee account. The link to that's going to be in the description. And have a good evening.